hello everyone and welcome back to my channel we have been discussing the methods to estimate heritability and this is the second video on this topic in first video I talked about the overview of heritability uh, I discussed the different types of heritability which are broad sense and narrow sense heritability uh, I talked about the methods to estimate broad sense heritability I also discussed the methods to estimate narrow sense heritability and I also provided an example on estimation of broad sense heritability using twins data so if you didn't watch that video I would recommend you to watch it before watching this one to better understand this topic in this video I will talk about the estimation of narrow sense heritability using regression so let's begin with our today's topic that is estimation of narrow sense heritability using offspring parent regression as I have already explained you in my first video that pay offspring parent regression can be further divided into two types which are regression of offspring on one parent and regression of offspring on mid parent so if you have values on only one parent and its offspring you will use the regression of offspring on one parent and in case you have the values on the both of the parents and their offspring then you would use the regression of offspring on mid parent mid parent means the average value of parents so before actually estimating heritability using offspring parent regression i would like to give you an overview about this method this method is based on the resemblance between parents and their offspring it means that this regression it gives us the value of how much the similar are parents and the offspring and on the basis of that we estimate heritability as we know that parents pass half of their genes to the offspring which means that one offspring receives 50% of the genes from the male parent and the 50% of the genes from the female parent so it has 50% similar genes with one parent and this phenotypic resemblance between parents and offspring arises due to their shared alleles so the similarity of offspring with the parents depends on the number of shared alleles the higher the number of shared alleles between the parents and offspring the higher phenotypically resemblance will be observed in those individuals and what are the basis of genetic differences genetic differences arise due to different gene action which are additive dominance and epistatic gene action i have already explained the detail about the genetic variance in my uh, earlier video so genetic differences arises due to different type of gene action additive dominance and epistasis it is very important to know that dominance and epistatic component of genetic variance they are not inherited by progeny they do not cause the resemblance between the parents and offspring because they are not inherited by the offspring it is the additive component of genetic variance that is inherited by the progeny so similarities between the offspring and their parents arises due to additive genetic components and the degree of phenotypic resemblance can be determined by comparing the phenotypes of parents and the offspring so we can find the similarities between the phenotypes of parents and offspring by comparing their phenotypes and one way is through regression so the phenotypes of parents and offspring can be compared 
थ्रू द रिग्रेशन रिग्रेशन कोफिशेंट शोज हाउ मच पेरेंट एंड ऑफ स्प्रिंग आर सिमिलर एंड वी एज्यूम दैट द ओनली फैक्टर दैट मेक्स पेरेंट एंड ऑफ स्प्रिंग सिमिलर इज देयर कॉमन जेनेटिक बैकग्राउंड सो वी एज्यूम दैट द पेरेंट्स एंड ऑफ स्प्रिंग आर सिमिलर बिकॉज दे हैव similar genetic makeup or they have same, same genes and this regression coefficient which is also known as beta it reflects the heritability it tells us that how much similar are the phenotypes of parents and offspring so it also reflects the heritability if the trait is determined by genetics only we would expect a regression coefficient of 1 and if the trait is controlled by environment only then we would expect the regression coefficient of 0 but if the trait is affected by both genetics as well as environment we would expect regression coefficient between 0 and 1 it would be more than 0 because it is also affected by genetics and it would be less than 1 because it is affected by the environment so it it would be between 0 and 1 i am sure now you have understood the basis of uh, of spring parent regression method to estimate heritability so now we will estimate heritability using regression of of spring on one parent method to estimate heritability using regression of offspring on one parent we need data on one parent and its offspring so if you want to estimate heritability using this method you need to have the phenotypic values on one parent uh, either male parent or female parent and the phenotypic value for the same trait on the offspring this method is very useful as it can be also used to estimate heritability for sex limited traits sex limited traits are those traits which are only expressed in single sex for example milk production milk production is a sex limited trait and it is only expressed in females it is not expressed in males so if you want to estimate the heritability of milk production you will need to have milk production records on the daughter and its offspring as sire doesn't produce milk so sire's records are not necessary for estimation of heritability using regression of offspring on one parent as i have already mentioned that offspring are 50% similar to one parent that means that regression coefficient would be equal to half heritability and heritability will be the twice to the regression coefficient so it can be written as heritability is equal to 2b so to estimate heritability using regression of offspring on one parent we first need to estimate the regression coefficient for the trait using the formula that is given here this formula is very easy and it is also known as machine formula because it is very easy to calculate there are different formulas to calculate a regression coefficient but i always prefer this one because it is very easy so in this formula b is the regression coefficient x is independent variable that is also sometimes known as predictor or explanatory variable so in regression x is always independent variable and y is always dependent variable and it is also known as response variable or outcome variable so now we will see an example on estimation of heritability using regression of offspring on one parent i have this data on the birth weights of different sheep the first column shows 
offspring ID. The second column shows the dam's birth weight, which I denoted with the x as x is used for independent variable and dam's birth weight is independent variable. The third column shows the offspring birth weight, which I denoted with the y as y is used for dependent variable and as birth weight of offspring is dependent on the birth weight of dam so birth weight of offspring is always used as dependent variable so this is the birth weight of dam and this is the birth weight of this dam's offspring and so on so now we will see the regression formula to know what are the things which are required so this is the regression formula b which is the regression coefficient is equal to sum of x y minus sum of x into sum of y divided by n and this whole is divided by sum of x square minus sum of x square divided by n so in this formula we need sum of x y we also need sum of x sum of y we need n and we also need sum of x square sum of x and n so first we will calculate these values to calculate the regression coefficient so n is equal to 5 as we have 5 dams and 5 offspring so n is 5 sum of x is equal to 13 which i have already calculated you can also calculate by yourself uh, and sum of y is equal to 13.75 so we also need sum of xy and sum of x square which i will calculate now so you also need this column which would be the x square column and you will square each of the x value uh, for example you will square this x values it was 2.5 and you will square it it would become 6.25 and then you will also square all of these values and then at the end you will sum up these values and sum of x square is equal to 36 here so as we also have to calculate sum of xy so i have al also made a column for xy here to calculate xy we will multiply this uh, x with the uh, y value so 2.5 multiplied by 2.75 that is equal to 6.875 and you will multiply all of these values and at the end our sum of x y would be 36.13 so as we have calculated all of the required values now we will put them into the formula so our formula will now be replaced with the for values which are 36.13 sum of x y sum of x is 13 sum of y is 13.75 divided by n which is the total number of values that is 5 one important thing which you have to keep in mind here that first we have sum of x square which means first we will take the square of x then we will take the sum that means first we will calculate the square of each value and then we will calculate the sum as i have done in this way i have calculated the square of each value first and then i summed up all of these values but in case of this you have to use the sum which is available here okay so this value came from here and this 13 came from here so first we summed up all of the x values and then we will take the square of these values okay this was very important point to consider here i have seen most of the students uh, make mistake here so that's why i have explained it here so then you will calculate 
this and our formula will be become like this and again you will solve this equation and it will become like this and after solving we will get the results like this b b is equal to 0.38 divided by 2.2 and after solving this so our regression coefficient value or beta value is 0.17 and as this method is the regression of offspring on one parent so heritability would be equal to 2b as i have already explained it that in this case the beta value of beta would be equal to half heritability so to calculate heritability we will multiply the value of beta with 2 by we will multiply this 2 with 0.17 so our heritability will become 0.34 so this is our heritability 0.34 i hope now you can calculate this heritability by yourself so thank you for watching this video and if you didn't subscribe my channel please do subscribe it and if you like this video please share it with your fellow students